So let's speak for a while about what we today call uh, the standard cosmological model. That's a model which uh, starts by a Big Bang. Big Bang is something uh, very mysterious even to physicists because uh, this is a starting point, point of our understanding and we think that we are able to trace back the evolution of the universe up to this initial Big Bang, but we don't know what created the Big Bang, what forces were behind the Big Bang, and whether anything at all existed before the Big Bang. So, as I'm saying, this is our starting point, and uh, we can try to understand what happened, how the universe evolved, and how the structure in the universe evolved. So let's first have a look at this map. This is the oldest image of the universe that we have. It shows a map of the so-called microwave background radiation. That's radiation that was released relatively short time after Big Bang. Not short in terms of the human lifetime, but short in terms of the lifetime of the universe. It was emitted after 400,000 years following the Big Bang, while the age of the universe, according to our current knowledge, is roughly 14 billion years. And here on the map we see the universe as it looked before stars and galaxies were created. What we see here are spots of different colors. The red color shows the places where the universe is slightly hotter and denser than in the other parts. The coolest and less dense places are given by the blue color. And out of these small over densities, larger structures have formed through the gravitational collapse. So galaxies and clusters of galaxies that we see today in our present universe were created out of these over densities. And we can compare this map to this image uh, on the right. It shows a very small portion of the current universe. In fact, it shows two galaxies that entered into a collision and are in the process of merging. And you see different colors there. In the blue and white color, you see stars shining in the galaxy, while the different red, orange and yellowish colors show the distribution of gas. And in this gas new stars form. So we see here very different processes separated roughly by 13 billions of years. Right? Actually it's also connected to this map because by analyzing these spots of different color uh, we can uh, learn a lot about the evolution of the universe including uh, its uh, spatial and temporal uh, infinity or finiteness and actually the most modern data uh, seem to indicate that the universe is expanding and not only it is expanding but it is expanding more and more fast and uh, the future of such a universe uh, will be uh, an infinitely living universe that is less and less uh, warm and less and less dense and it's a universe which is infinite in both time and space. This is not the only possible cosmological model by theory but the observ observational data seem to indicate this. It was finite in time in the past, since there was this Big Bang, but the future seems to be infinite. So. Yes, in fact, the question of entropy, uh, when it is applied to the universe as a whole, is very complex and it's not yet fully uh, understood. The first person who uh, applied the concept of entropy uh, to the whole universe was Lord Kelvin in about 1850 and he just took uh, the classical laws of thermodynamics 
and apply them to the universe as a whole. And he came to the conclusion that uh, the universe must approach at some finite time something which is called thermodynamical equilibrium. And this thermodynamical equilibrium basically means that all places in the universe would have the same temperature and no further work would be allowed. But work is needed uh, by life. For example, so that would mean something uh, which uh, is called the heat death of the universe. However, it was a very speculative prediction made at the time when uh, our knowledge about the universe was very partial compared to our today's view. And today we are not even sure whether the concept of entropy can be applied to the universe uh, as a whole. Also, there are new discoveries that. Lord Kelvin didn't know, like black holes, uh, inflation, dark energy. So we actually do not know how the entropy of the universe will evolve and whether the universe in some very distant future will face the heat of death. The concept of dark matter was formulated uh, in the 30s of the last century, but uh, wasn't believed until about 1970. And it is based on astronomical observations that follow the motions of stars and galaxies. And those motions appeared to be faster compared to what the gravitational field of the visible matter requires. So people thought that the solution to these fast motions would be to add a hypothetical dark matter. And until now, we don't know what this dark matter is composed of, what type of particles. But most astrophysicists today firmly believe that there is really a lot of dark matter, in fact, dominated by 90% of the matter budget of the universe. So much more matter seems to be invisible than the matter that is visible. And not only that, uh, according to analysis of uh, something which is called Big Bang Nucleosynthesis, which is a theory that says how many elements, uh, how many, how, uh, what amount of uh, different elements have, uh, have been created, this theory predicts how much matter is the ordinary matter, which we call baryonic matter. And this amount is much smaller than what this dark matter is uh, supposed to be. So most, most of this dark matter, if it exists at all, must be in some form of uh, exotic particles that we do not know yet. So this is one of our current, I would say, mythologies in, astroph in astrophysics, that there is a lot of dark matter yet to be discovered. And not only that, since these images of uh, the microwave background have shown, as I already told, that the universe seems to be expanding faster and faster, uh, we also need another exotic substance, which is called dark energy. And we think that this dark energy is even more abundant than the dark matter, but uh, we have very uh, fuzzy knowledge about what it really is. Would be. But uh, this dark energy seems to drive uh, the fast expansion of the universe and it will dominate the energy budget of the universe more and more in future. I agree. Uh, yeah, white dwarf, it's perhaps a little bit simpler to define than black hole. Uh, white dwarf is uh, one of the possible end states of stars. Uh, stars, like our sun, uh, when they live their normal life, uh, they burn hydrogen into helium, and if they are heavy enough, they can burn other chemical elements as well. Uh, but one day, these nuclear reactions uh, are over, and those stars proceed through transformations of their interior and of their stellar envelope and 
Stars like our Sun finally shed a lot of mass uh, in gaseous envelopes and what remains in the center is a very small star uh, which is called white dwarf and there are no longer any nuclear reactions in the white dwarf. It just shines because it's very hot and it releases this energy that is stuck in the center and it continuously cools down uh, and over uh, billions of years is becoming uh, something which is called uh, black dwarf in fact. So white dwarf is just uh, we could say it's a degenerate uh, star or uh, it's better to say a stellar remnant it's no longer a normal star. On the other hand black holes uh, they can also be end states of stellar life but it's a more general concept. A black hole is, a, is an object that's predicted by the theory of general relativity. In fact, it's any object that has, a, that has its gravity field uh, large enough so as not to enable the escape of any light, of any photons, any electromagnetic uh, radiation. And these black holes can be stellar black holes. This is the end state of uh, stars that are very massive in the beginning, let's say between 10 and 100 solar masses when they are born. Or uh, they can be supermassive black holes uh, which we can find in centers of galaxies. Or these can be so-called primordial black holes which are remnants uh, of the conditions in the earlier universe and that can serve that uh, could survive until today and that can be wandering through the universe for me i understand that the biggest challenge is still the dark matter because it's been claimed dozens of years ago that there should be this dark matter and we are looking for it by different uh, direct and indirect experiments uh, in space but the dark matter particles are still uh, escaping the detection so maybe it's a time to think about other possibilities and a lot of people actually think about other possibilities like uh, alternative theories of gravity and uh, I think we might see uh, some surprises within years to come in this respect. Perhaps uh, finally the paradigm of dark matter and dark energy dominated universe will evolve into something completely different like it already happened with ancient cosmologies in the past. But it's not my prediction, it's of course only a possibility that we might be completely wrong.